Seek, yeah. But also, set your mind on what's above. First, it's about what you're looking for. Seek what's above. Second, it's about what you're looking at. Set your mind on the things above. Remember what Jesus asked his disciples about who people said he was? I'm thinking of Mark chapter 8. Do you remember that? Some people say John the Baptist, some people say Elijah, some people say one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? says Jesus. You're the Messiah. Well done, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood haven't revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then he started talking to them about all the things that the Son of Man must suffer, be rejected by man, and cast out. Peter took him on one side and said, Lord, surely not to rebuke him. And Jesus said, Get you behind me, Satan. Why? Because your mind is on the things of earth, not on the things of God. What made Jesus turn to Peter and call him Satan? His mind was on the things of earth, not on the things of heaven. And that puts you on the old Knicks team. The difference between a faithful follower of Jesus and Satan seems to be, according to Jesus in Mark 8, whether you have your mind set on the concerns above or on earthly things. That's how important the issue that Paul is addressing here is. Set your minds on things above. Sounds pretty like verse 1, of course. It's quite a different word that gets used here. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, set your mind on things above. I've got to tell you, it's, it's a misleading translation there in the English, because hearts and minds are pretty specific ideas in English, as if you're setting your emotions and then setting your intellect. No, it's not that in the original at all. That is completely misleading. Um, don't go with that. It's just set your mind on things above. For later, consider. Consider. Brian says it's rather a neutral term. It's about thinking, considering, judging, generally giving one's mind to in the most broad senses. Not so much what you're looking for as what you're looking at. What do you think about? Ooh, don't answer that question. I don't want to know. What do you think about as you go about your daily life? What's going on in there? Because this is true, isn't it? As you're pottering around your laboratory or your library, Jim. Um, as you're pottering about the place, doing your work, your mind's doing stuff, isn't it? As you're still waiting for the bus, and as you're driving the car down the road, your mind's doing things. What's it doing? What's interesting, there's a hole in the hedge. Paul is saying, take those minds of yours that are always running, and set them running on something else. Set them running on the things of God, where Christ is seated at the right hand of Not simply an act of the intellect, of course, this front end, oh, this word, a movement of the will. It's got to do with aims and motives underlying them, because your mind, your personality, your character runs on the thoughts that are normally taking place inside that cranium. The thoughts that are going on there form the character and the personality out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth, speaks. Now remember, the direction of travel of Paul's thought is away from a heresy filled, this worldly pattern of thought and sinful, chaotic life that gets spawned out of those things, towards a heavenly things above where Jesus is, new world of thought, and the ordered, disciplined, sanctified life that this pattern of thinking creates. There is no doubt that the thoughts that go around in your head will issue, will emanate forth, emanate forth. I'm tired, the words are getting quite big. It's going to spew out into your life and the way you live, and the personality and the character that you manifest in the world where God has put you. It's an admonition to be heavenly minded, not earthly minded, along with all the things that brings along with it. Now Paul is not saying, Oh Lord, heavenly high and mighty thoughts, well, don't go there. You know that ain't right, don't you? But he is saying, let your mind run on the things of God, and it will determine and help in your living for him. Set your minds on things above, and everybody's going to do this. And every secular commentator in the media and in the press and all that, yes, that's nice. We want, we want our religious people to be basically good and godly, because that's rather a good thing. And you've stated a positive. 
Set your mind on earth. Yes, we need earthly minded clerics. Yes, absolutely. And Christians as well. As long as they don't bring it to work. So set your minds on earthly things and pause it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not on earthly things. On heavenly things, not on earthly things. The negative comes into play straight away. Set your mind on things that are above. That's great. No one objects because they don't have the full picture yet. If you're going to do this, then you are not going to do that. Hang on. There's a destruction in place. Obviously, really, that a world so committed to the compromised task of having its cake and eating it. The picture hasn't been grasped when the positive requirement is asserted, but seven shades of protest break out when you assert the negative. Did you see QI last night? On the telly, did you see QI XL last night? We did, didn't we? And immediately there's Bill Bailey talking about cognitive dissonance. Right? This is a modern phrase, we have an older word for, it's called hypocrisy. It's when your mind is holding different things in tension together, as if you're living with self-contradiction. I know there's a, there's a technical end of cognitive dissonance, but when Bill Bailey was talking about it, that's what he was talking about, okay? So I know, you know, I, I'll write about it, I know what you're saying, but this is what Bill Bailey was on about. Set your minds on things about not on earthly things, when you say both things. Now, of course, it's an enormously big ask. We've got how many senses, Callum? Uh, six. Five. Five? Five, I'm used to. Anybody no, else? Any advance on six? Five. Six cents will be common sense, will Do you include the glasses? Do you include the glasses? No, no. We've got five senses, mainly speaking. And each of those five senses bombards us with sensory input throughout every day, every waking hour. And each of those channels, each of those sensory input channels, persuades us to set our minds on earthly, temporal things. You see material things. You smell material things. You taste. Hmm? Will you not have a third eye in the middle of our forehead to see heaven with? Right? We don't have a second pair of ears flapping around here somewhere at the top of the head to hear the angel's song. Right? Almost our entire information and communication input comes to us from or about things on earth. And we can't switch it off. It's like we've got to have it, but we mustn't let it master us. And there's a problem. There's a problem there. You've got to walk over the muddy field. And some plague is going to stick to your boots. Your mind is going to have to be concerned with this world. But be careful, says Paul, you don't set your mind on it. Controlling your thinking, controlling your mindset, that's going to be quite a battle, but that is the battle. Not wrestling with a particular individual sin as the first portal call. You will, but the first portal call is this, is to fill your mind with the things of God, the things about them, not with earthly things. 